Does I that know. have to be on me while we talk, or can you face? The oh, I just, I really, I yeah, just want to record. Well, why don't I, we just put it on you then? So you went back there and you were talking to the guy in the office, and you have no idea who it was. No, I work in the, I work in the park. So when you were standing there talking to him, you didn't know who that was. Uh, how is, how is that possible? You were talking to him. How are things in the Shire? Not too shabby. It's always nice there. You get second breakfast. How so? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Well, what's the second breakfast thing? That's funny. Hobbits. Oh, okay. They like, have second breakfast. Oh, I didn't know that. Because they just live the really great life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I also want to make clear, too, is it's a felony that you guys violated in Title 40, Chapter 16, Section 10. Hey everyone, I am free. It is September 26th, 2024. I am in the City of University Place. Beautiful day outside as you can see today. I'm heading back to the Public Works facility for Pierce County, which is in University Place. And I am going there to follow up on a Public Records Act issue that's been ongoing and I've been having significant issues with. Um, you guys may remember from the story here. That Deputy Director Wintermute, when I originally went there to get records, stated I could easily do the public records request and get the documents I sought from the district, or I'm sorry, from the county uh, on behalf of Parks and Rec for who had been utilizing the east and west conference room um, you can um, actually you can just put in a just a public records request and just ask for who's actually renting the spaces we can get that to you well i mean again you know i could go in and i can look up to see who's in there but certainly i don't want to just you know just say who's in there and what they're doing and what their purpose is now i received on august 12th as you can see here documents that say this is the only thing from the PC, PC Parks, the Pierce County Park South region. Uh, in that email it stated that there was no other information, no other responsive records. Sometimes grown-ups need to lie. It's hard to explain. Well, in a big shout out to a subscriber, I'm getting his name and documents here, uh, Kenny Lemons. He requested the exact same records I did and in fact got them one day later. And I'll show you those records here. And there they are. There's the records right there for the East Room at Chambers Creek. And there is another one that is or the West Room. And as you can see here on the 6th of August, Tuesday, when I went there, you'll notice it says overlap White River School District. So I went and looked up the White River School District. And this guy that you saw here from my original story is the superintendent. I asked him at the time what was going on, you know, who they were with and all that. And uh, he just went back inside and didn't answer. There's a, like a YouTube channel and they post it and I've seen visits in other places and, and oh. but I've never seen someone do it in person. So I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm actually a journalist. I work on different stories. So I'm actually here because allegedly some elderly folk came to do a public records request and were not rebuked, but <laughs> not treated well okay. allegedly they were treated brusquely and told they had to go online and a lot of older people don't like to do the internet thing so oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some people reach out to me I do a lot of stories about like public records act issues accountability sure. that kind of stuff uh, 
mostly it seems I get a lion's share regarding elderly people. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Uh, so are you guys a private entity renting this? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Now, I can't make them answer and whatnot. But the fact of the matter is a school district paid tax dollar monies to go and utilize those rooms at that facility. So I'm going to be going back there to ask Deputy Director Wintermute or the Director of Public Works why I was denied the records. They stated that those records did not exist and that... the records were not the records request was non-responsive because they weren't there as we can see that is absolutely not true now in washington state of note is the concealing, destroying, altering, etc. a public record is a class C felony. It's punishable up by up to five years in prison and a thousand dollar fine. Now that's found in the revised codes of Washington title 40 chapter 16 section 10 where it describes those consequences and I'm gonna go ask Deputy Director Wintermute why those records were in fact concealed from that public records request. So we're going to go in. Hello. Hi. How can I help you today? I'm hoping to speak with the director or deputy director Wintermute. Uh, by the way, that office directly back there, straight back, uh, whose office is that? The guy who had the red shirt on? Um, I think that's the, uh, I think that's one of the planning and public works uh, office spaces. Gotcha. Who was, who was the guy in the red shirt that came out? I'm sorry? The guy in the red shirt that came out, he had a laptop, glasses on. Whose office is that? Um, yeah, that's one of the planning and public works uh, offices. Yeah, whose office though? Yeah, I'm not sure whose office. Can you find out for me? Thanks, appreciate it. I had asked you earlier whose office that was. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, you were back there talking to the person in the office, so who was that? Yeah, so like planning and public works. Yeah. The human being that occupies that office, though, is the one I'm asking, who is that? Yeah, uh, so that's like the planning and public works, I'm not sure who. Uh, so you went back there and you were talking to the guy in the office and you have no idea who it was? No, I work in the, yeah, I work in the park side. So when you were standing there talking to him, you didn't know who that was? Uh, How is... How is that possible? You were talking to him. Right, yeah. Um, you know, some of the planning and public works employees, uh, you know. The guy in the red shirt. Yeah, I'm not sure. Good. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hello, director. How are you doing? Good. How can I help you? Well, I have uh, an issue that I'd like to address. I, uh, as you recall, came in to do some records requests. Mm -hmm. And I was given a response from Nathan um, of this. It was basically from the PC Parks South region, yeah. saying that's the only thing we had. Now, ironically, um, a follower of my uh, stories submitted a records request, and he got exactly what I was seeking, but I didn't. So. Trying to figure out why that is, but I'll show you what he got, which is this. Now that goes to demonstrate quite clearly, quite concisely, that the records I sought were available. And this is the email from Mr. Lemons. Okay. Keep them. I do want all those back. I'm gonna need those. Sure. But my uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. If you want to take copies, you feel yeah, free. Yeah, absolutely. Let me take copy because then I can compare the two requests sure. and see. And what I'm trying to figure out is like, even if the idea, and I, I made this clear with Nathan and the county in general before, even if there's a divide between public works and parks and recreation, the fact that Parks and Rec operates in this building to some extent, whatnot, and that Deputy Director Winter made it clear on camera and audio and video recording that those records were available and all I had to do was request it. Um, you can. Um, actually, you can just put in a, just a public records request and just ask for who's actually renting the spaces. We can get that to you. Well, I mean, again, you know, I could go in and I could look up to see who's in there, but certainly I don't want to just, you know, just say who's in there and what they're doing and what their purpose is. And the fact that Mr. Lemons successfully received it one day after he requested it tells me something's going on there. Now, what I'm concerned about and is... I correct that. The difference is between information and records and the assumption that something is going on is just a matter of clarity. So I'll make copies of both of these and we have your email so we send back to you what the difference was and why you got two different results. Well, if I could clarify those something... I'll make the copies for you. Are you going to come back? And give you the copies. Okay. Wow. Incredibly rude. Now, Director, I would like some clarification because I'm not really understanding what you were meaning by the clarity. Well, I'll look into what his request was and what your request is. Gotcha. And send you what the difference was that resulted in the Yeah, trial. and I'll be honest. I, When looking at it, there's no substantial difference. There may be some minor parlance, some colloquial differences that exist, but it was extremely clear. And additionally, Pierce County adopted the Administrative Code for the Public Records Act that you see in Title 44, Chapter 14. Yeah, that's and what I'm trying to make clear here is that I referenced the, we need to work together to solve this problem. What I want to point out here, made very clear to everyone watching and listening as the devil is in the details, is that the Public Records Act identifies to a reasonable degree that cooperation should be sought if there seems to be an issue that may prevent responsive records from being delivered. That is seen in Washington Administrative Code, Title 44, Chapter 14, Section 05003 here, and the Revised Codes of Washington, Title 42, Chapter 56, Section 520, where it is written that, respectively, Technical reasonableness and feasibility can vary from request to request. When a request for electronic records involves technical issues, the best approach is for both parties to confer and cooperatively resolve them. Often, a telephone conference will be sufficient. This approach is consistent with the requirement that agencies provide the, quote, fullest assistance, end quote, to a requester. Found in RCW 42.56.520 subsections 2 and 3, additional time required to respond to a request may be based upon the need to clarify the intent of the request to locate and assemble the information requested to notify third persons or agencies affected by the request or to determine whether any of the information requested is exempt and that a denial should be made as to all or part of the request. In acknowledging receipt of a public record request that is unclear, an agency, the Office of the Secretary of the Senate, or the Office of the Chief Clerk of the House of Representatives may ask the requester to clarify what information the requestor is seeking. At no point did someone attempt to work together. And part of the issue is that I identified to Nathan that he could, as could have Deputy Director Wintermute, taken a screenshot. Let's go over exactly what that letter said as you see here. So my efforts to attempt to correct the problem do not get seen as an issue of clarity, as Director Miles said a moment ago. And the assumption that something is going on is just a matter of clarity and that rather it was an issue of concealing records from one citizen that they do not like and providing them to another that they take no umbrage with. Good morning, public records officer. With respect to item one, please consider this a new request to attain all permits for rental of the West East Rooms at the ESB on August 6, 2024. As to item number two, you've made my point for me. You wrote, please be advised this department can only search for records prepared, owned, used, or retained by Pierce County Parks and Recreation. Deputy Director Winter Mute acknowledged on recording both video and audio that the records are available to the public when he said you can actually you can just put in a public records request and just ask for who is renting those spaces and we can get that to you again I could go in and look up 
who is in there. If Deputy Director Wintermute can go in there and look up who is in there, then that is a used writing by the Parks and Recreation Department per Revised Codes of Washington, Title 42, Chapter 56, Section 10, Subsection 4. If that is a used writing, it is disclosable per the Public Records Act. RCW 42.56.0104 identifies a writing as writing means handwriting, typewriting, printing, photostating, photographing, and every other means of recording any form of communication or representation, including but not limited to letters, words, pictures, sounds, or symbols, or combination thereof, and all papers, maps, magnetic or paper tapes, photographic films and prints, motion picture, film and video recordings, magnetic or punched cards, discs, drums, diskettes, sound recordings, and other documents, including existing data compilations from which information may be obtained or translated. As I identified in the WAX provided, either taking a screenshot of the screen that has that group colloquially speaking, information does not create a new record. It simply makes it producible in an electronic format and providing it as such works or having me come in to inspect the record since it is a writing and thus a record. At a computer terminal works as well. I am doing my level best here to work with the county to find a solution to produce the records that Deputy Director Wintermute admits exists per my recording of him and in accordance with Washington Administrative Code Title 44 Chapter 14 Sections 05001 and 05003. I'd rather solve this problem on this level rather than have the county play with the citizens money even more. So, in other words, Nathan Rose did not do his job correctly when it pertained to me making a public records request. However, when Mr. Lemons requested the exact same records, he received them promptly. I wonder why. It almost seems as if there is something afoot here. Perhaps uh, concealing of records. You guys do this because if you look, that's from Public Works. That's exactly what Public Works did, was take a screenshot for these other public records requests. Now, for some reason, I understand the point you're you guys... I'm gonna look into it and I'm gonna Yeah, well, one thing I also wanna make clear too is it's a felony that you guys violated in Title 40, Chapter 16, Section 10. Wow, there you go. She's going to look into it all right. She's going to find that it was all one big misunderstanding. Unfortunately, that's not what the evidence here says. All right. Well, they've at least been put on notice that uh, somebody within the department uh, committed a felony. Um, obviously, they know the jig is up and that they've been caught breaking the law. The only thing I can do now is just continue to bring awareness to this. Um, I think especially for any of you that are voting in this year's election, especially here in Washington State and specifically Pierce County, um, consider the county commissioners, county council, when you think about who you want in office because they're the ones that are in charge of the county. This is a county department and this goes to show clearly and concisely that not only are they trying to obfuscate and prevent records from being released because they're picking who they want to give those records to. And again, huge shout out to Kenny Lemons. You are amazing. When any of you do this kind of stuff and present those kinds of documents, especially when I'm being thwarted, it's hard to prove what you don't know is there. But when someone else gets it like Kenny and sends that material to me, yeah, that's where the hammer gets dropped. And this is exactly what happened here today with the director. She didn't want to stay on camera because she knows exactly what's going on. So we're going to be heading on over uh, to speak with the designated public records officer for all of Public Works, which is Miss Pradol. And we're going to ask her about what's going on. Come on in. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. You're welcome. No. Mm -hmm. So I don't have access to that information, which is the reason. Yeah, which is the reason. Can we get that for you? Oh, it's okay. Um, okay. I got it. Season professional. Fair enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course. Of course, have a good day. Let me go ahead and redirect you, okay? Don't go. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bear with me for just one second and one moment, please. Hi there. Yeah, how's it going? Good. I'm looking to see if Shannon is in. Shannon? I think it's Pradol, Pradol. So she is not here today, my friend. Okay. Um, is there anybody else? Absolutely. Okay. Let me get you my um, my manager. Thank I'll you. Be. Appreciate can it. I, can I get some, you? your name? Can I Steve. Get name? Yeah. Steve? Yep. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks to meet you. I'll yeah, be likewise. Hey, sir. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. What can Good. I do for you today? Well, I am trying to get to the bottom of something. Um, back on August 6th, I submitted a public records request to Public Works. I don't know to what degree Shannon was involved. My understanding is she's sort of the head PRO. Is that accurate? She's not. She's a PRO. She's works. one of the PROs. Yeah, she's okay. a PRO. Um, I got a response of there are no responsive records beyond one that was just an ancillary, almost unrelated document. Although I found out later that someone requested the same documents that I did and got them within one day. And so my concern is that the department has concealed these documents intentionally, which in Washington is a felony. And I'm trying to figure out who did that. Sure. Take a seat. Let me grab my computer so I can sure. look up the PR number. Yeah, Sorry, thanks. Roberta. And thanks again for the help. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, anytime. So I kind of want to go through this chronologically because I figured that might be... Oh, Does that have to be on me while we talk or can you face... Oh, I just... I really yeah, just want to record. Well, why don't we just put it on you then? Well, I've already got something. I just... Yeah. I'm just recording that. I, I just don't really want to be on sure. camera. Well, most I mean, I want to help you with yeah, your issue, that. of course, but I just don't um, think I need to be on camera while doing so. So, on August 6th... Let me sit over here then. Okay. On August 6th, um, I ended up... And I don't know if this is actually... It says from Maddie Kroll to... PPW Public Records, but at the top it says Sharon Pradol or Predal. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is actually involving her and, or if it's just sort of like a PPW Public Records is her, but I've got that and they acknowledge that I dropped off the um, public records request to, e to the ESB. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the 12th of August, I received this response from Nathan Rose and the from two was Jen Sur Sergeant or Sergeant to Nicholas Tosea. Yeah, let me see if I give you, can I look at yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Thank you. And what I had requested was the, who had rented the meeting rooms, uh, the conference rooms at the ESB for the 6th of August. Yeah. And that's what they said and that's what they said are all of the responsive records. Okay. Now. So you reached out to Jen. Uh, I didn't reach out to Jen. I think what happened is there was some conversation going on between Nathan, Jen, and that other person. Um, I, I'm not really sure how that conversation went, but if you notice, it says Nathan Rose at the top, so. Mm-mm, I don't. Or is that the? This is just an email, like, that doesn't really have, it's not related to a public disclosure request. Well, is the public disclosure request number on this email? No. What happened is I received this through the portal. So I just downloaded this um, and then printed it out. So that's what Nathan sent to me uh, through the portal. Okay. Um, so then what happened is... I don't see a, like a request for information. I don't even... Yeah. Yeah. I, I can get the... If, if you'd like... Hold on a second. I don't need... All I need is the public disclosure number. There we go. Right there. Okay. okay. This so is for the Parks and Recreation. This isn't... 
pull the PPW. Can I have the PPW one? Um, the one that Sharon responded to? Yeah, I don't know if she actually responded to it because there was multiple people involved. What happened is, and I want to clarify why this is a little weird, I ended up, when I was down at ESB, I know that Parks and Public Works share that facility. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the guy's name, but he was co-utilizing the terminal um, that both Parks and Public Works share. And so when I asked Deputy Director Wintermute um, if I could get those records, which turns out it's these right here, um, so, said, you, so you did get it? I, I didn't get it, actually. That's part of why I'm coming here. What happened is uh, he said, yeah, absolutely. Just submit a public records request. We can get it to you. No sweat. I said, great. Uh, so I submitted it. What I got back was just this document right here through the portal. Well, how'd you get this then? So an individual, Mr. Kenny Lemons, requested the same thing I did and got exactly what he had asked for and what I had asked for. They concealed it from me. Well, but they hold on kept for a minute. Um, in order to find out what happened here, I would need to know, I would need to have your number of the public disclosure request. Sure. Yeah, I can you log did, in. did so I could look that up. Okay, let me go grab my phone real quick. Yeah, you bet. I'm sorry to be redundant, but this one was under Gandalf, right? The 0824? Uh, I think is what it said. Yeah, let me double check. I, I was okay. lined in there. Check here. How are things in the Shire? Not too shabby. It's always nice there. You get second breakfast. How so? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Well, what's the second breakfast thing? That's funny. Hobbits. Oh, okay. I like they have second breakfast. Oh, I didn't know that. Because they just live the really great life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. But what I do know is this is what I received back. I then responded to, uh, basically, I'm assuming it's Nathan, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Nathan with this. And then I got a response back that said, we gave you all the responsive records. So then I said, now I want a review of the denial of, the denial of records uh, in accordance with WAC and statute. They said they didn't have any responsive records. I uh, know, they responded with this. That's what they responded with. goes back to and it's kind of so we bait stamp here so we know what's been produced for what request so and I've I thought this was county practice but I haven't been with the county that long so oh, okay. don't quote me on yeah, anything um, but to my knowledge we would bait stamp the public disclosure number down at the bottom of the page okay as a document that we produced under that public disclosure number. That makes sense because now. Yeah, you, you and know. so to see this email with no bait stamping or no identification marking that it was produced under a public disclosure request odd. is odd. Yeah, okay. it's odd. And so. Well, do you want to make a copy of that too as far as what was received? Well, once. Ma yeah, sure. I mean, okay. more, more helps, right? And if you want to have my. Uh, but review this, of denial this records as well. I mean, that's me basically saying, oh, it's all right. I know. I'll get the, no big deal. I'll get the thing. Yeah, I do. I'm going to take a copy of the denial of records. All right, well, that's it here at the Public Works office. I uh, really like that lady, super helpful, super nice. Um, she's a little, you know, bothered by the video footage recording at the beginning, uh, but she handled it fine. I, I, you know, she seems like a really nice lady, but as you guys all know, I mean, sometimes I run across people that just go crazy. They do weird things. And I'm not saying that's her at all. It's just, you don't know who you're gonna run across initially. She turned out to be super nice. So 
hopefully this is gonna get figured out, but what's really clear here, and I wanna be really clear, those documents were withheld from me and there is no good reason for it. The PRO is supposed to uh, provide their name. They're not just supposed to say public records officer. Now there is, you can go to Pierce County's website and look up the list of public records officers. And Nathan Rose is listed there. But how do I know it's actually Nathan? I mean, it could have been somebody else filling in for him for the day or whatever. So hard to say. So I'm going to end up uh, reaching out to the ombudsman as well. But I'm going to give it a you know day or two or so to see if this lady's uh, help can figure out what's going on and hold these people to account for uh, withholding those records. Because Kenny figured it out and I uh, really appreciate his help. And so we need to figure out why this happened now because this is just non-transparent abusive government for whoever chose to withhold those records. And I'm certainly not saying it is that lady that was helping me at all. She was very helpful. So that's it for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that all notifications bell so you can get my stories right from the release. You can follow me on X and I am free auditing on Facebook at Inland Auditing Media. And if you want to help keep my feet on the streets, you can do so by going to the links in the description for Cash App and Venmo. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys at the next location. Bye for now.